here's the first lesson for um, chapter two. Chapter two is all about looking at the relationship between two variables. Um, we're going to look at the differences between um, two variables that have a linear relationship and two variables that have a nonlinear relationship. Before we actually look at how to use different sampling principles to collect data about variables and then um, how to graph the variables using scatter plots and uh, using a line of best fit to look at trends in the data and so on, before we learn how to do all of that, we're first going to look at how to make a hypothesis about um, the relationship between two variables. And we're also going to, in this lesson, look at different sources of data. So we're going to look at the difference between um, using primary sources of data or um, secondary sources of data. And we'll briefly talk about the advantages and disadvantages um, of the two of them. So let's start off with what is a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a theory or statement that is either true or false. So if we've got two variables, you can make a hypothesis about those two variables by stating what you think the relationship between those two variables is. Um, the hypothesis you make doesn't have to be right. It just has to be a statement um, about the relationship between those two variables that you could then conduct an experiment or a survey to, to look at whether that hypothesis is actually true or false. So let's practice doing that um, for the following pairs of data, um, pairs of variables, sorry. Um, the first one, the number of texts sent per day and the age of a person. So I've got two variables here. I've got the number of texts sent per day and the age of a person. So those are my two variables. I need to make a hypothesis about the relationship between those two variables. So my hypothesis, I think younger people send more texts. So I'm going to say, um, that's exactly what I'm going to say. Younger people send more text messages per day. Now, I don't know for sure if that hypothesis is correct. But that is a statement about the relationship between those two variables that is either true or false. And I can then conduct a survey to determine whether or not that is actually true or false. Number two, how much a person likes the penguins and their IQ. So I've got two variables again here. Um, how much a person likes the penguins, that's one variable. And the person's IQ, that's the other variable. So now I need to make a statement about the relationship between um, these two variables. So I think to me, this one's pretty common sense. I wouldn't even need to test this hypothesis. I know that the smarter a person is, the more they're going to like the penguins. And that's pretty self-explanatory. Since the penguins are, are the best hockey team in the NHL, of course a smarter person is going to like them because they're going to realize that they're the best. Let's do another example. Third one, the size of an animal and its lifespan. So once again, I've got two variables, size of an animal and the lifespan of the animal. So I need to make a statement about those two variables, um, about the relationship between those two variables that is either true or false. So my hypothesis is going to be, since I know that really small insects and stuff like that, they, they don't live very long, so I'm going to make my hypothesis to be the larger an animal is, the longer the animal the longer the animal's lifespan is. So that's my hypothesis about um, size of animals and its lifespan. And I could then conduct a, a survey um, and, and analyze some data about the, about the relationship between those two variables and determine whether that hypothesis is actually true or not. Let's also look at, because okay, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to look at how to not only make a hypothesis, but then how to state the opposite of a, a hypothesis. So let's let, write a hypothesis about um, a driver's age and the risk of having an accident, and then write the opposite of that hypothesis. So I've got my two variables, driver's age, and the other variable is risk of having an accident. Risk of having an accident. So my hypothesis about um, the relationship between these two variables is that um, I think older drivers have more experience, so they should be better at driving and have less accidents. So I'm going to say, um, older drivers have fewer accidents. That's my hypothesis um, about uh, the age of a driver and their risk of having accidents. I should actually throw in risk in there because we want to talk about the risk of, ha risk of having accidents. So older drivers have less of a risk of having or getting an accident. 
getting in accidents. So I think that suits uh, the question better. So older drivers have less of a risk of getting in accidents. So that's my hypothesis. So there's a couple ways you could write the opposite of that hypothesis. You could say younger drivers have uh, less of a risk of, get, of getting in accidents, or pr probably an easier way of writing opposite hypothesis is throwing in a not um, in between um, drivers, like drivers do not have less of a risk of getting in accidents. So what I'll say is older drivers do not have less of a risk of getting in accidents. That's the complete opposite of my original hypothesis. My original hypothesis said that older drivers have less of a risk, and my, the opposite of that would be that they do not have less of a risk. Okay, so just throwing in that do not um, in there, that gives you the opposite of the hypothesis. So let's do number four. Um, I've got my two variables, or number five, sorry. I've got my two variables, homework completion and marks. So my hypothesis about this data would be that people who complete more homework have higher marks. That seems like a logical hypothesis. If you do more of your homework, you're going to higher marks because you understand your material better. The opposite of that hypothesis, I'm just, once again, there's a couple ways you could state the opposite, but I'm going to throw that does not or do not in there again. So um, that's probably the easiest way, and it gives you the exact opposite. So the opposite of people who get their homework have higher marks would be people who complete more homework do not have higher marks. That would be the complete opposite of my original hypothesis. All right, now let's look at the different sources of data. So there is primary data, which is data, um, it's original data that a researcher gathers specifically for a particular experiment or survey. So if you want to conduct a survey, um, if you want to get some primary data, you actually have to go out and, and survey different people or, you know, do the research to find um, original data, data that you're not getting from someone else kind of thing, um, that is designed specifically for your um, experiment or survey. Secondary data um, is data that someone else has already gathered for, so, for some other purpose. So if you're doing an experiment, if you use data that someone else has collected um, for some other purpose to use in your um, survey, then um, that is secondary data. So once again, primary data is original data that you collect. Secondary data is data that someone else has already collected for another purpose. So, let's look at um, which of the following is a primary source of data. So an article in a magazine, a database, conducting an experiment to test the effectiveness of a new medication, or an entry from an online encyclopedia. So I've got four things here. I need to determine which one is a primary source of data, so which one is original data that I collect myself specifically for a particular experiment or survey. So, a magazine article, if I get my information from a magazine article, that's written by someone else, um, not intended specifically for my use. So it's not that one. A database, once again, is a collection of, of data that someone else has put together for their own purpose, not for design specifically for my experiment. So it's not that one. Um, conducting an experiment to test the effectiveness of a new medication, well, that almost fits the description perfectly. Um, primary data, original data the researcher gathers specifically for a particular experiment or survey. So if I actually conduct an experiment to test the effectiveness of a new medication, that is um, primary data because I'm doing something myself. I'm getting own, my own unique information and data specifically for this experiment. I'm not getting it from anyone else. And so I, I could, by process of elimination, I could rule out D, but why can't I rule out D actually? Um, D, entry from an online encyclopedia. So an online encyclopedia is, once again, information that someone else has recorded um, for a different purpose than what I'm doing. So I can rule out D. All right, let's look at number seven. Which of the following is a secondary source of data? So once again, secondary source of data, data that someone else has already gathered for some other purpose. So I need to figure out which one of these is data collected by someone else for another purpose. So, A, conducting a survey amongst your classmates. So if you're actually conducting your own survey and gathering your own data, that's definitely primary. So 
I can eliminate that choice. B, I can conduct an experiment to study the effects of pollution. So once again, if you're actually conducting an experiment and gathering your own unique data specifically for your experiment, that's primary data for sure. Okay? C, data collected 100 years ago by the Canadian government. Okay, so here we go. This is data collected by someone else 100 years ago. So it was, the data was collected for some other purpose. Okay? So if I use that data, that's definitely secondary data. That is data um, that someone else has already gathered for some other purpose. It's not original data. Okay. And I could rule out D, um, counting the makes of cars in a, in a mall parking lot. So if you actually go outside and gather the data of the makes of the cars in the parking lot, you're, you're collecting your own data, and it's unique to what you want to do. You can eliminate that one. All right. Explain whether each set of data is primary or secondary. What are the advantages and disadvantages of each person's choice of data source? Okay. So just a couple more examples. Then we'll be done with this lesson. Um, Number eight, Daniel phoned 100 families in his town to ask them how many pets they owned. So Daniel actually called those 100 families in his town and asked um, how many pets they owned. So that's definitely going to be a primary data source because that's original data that he's, um, he's collecting himself right in that moment for the experiment or survey that he wants to do. So that's primary data. So what's the advantages of having primary data? Um, I won't write it down, I'll just quickly discuss it. So the advantage of having some primary data is that it, it relates exactly to the, to the survey that you want to do. Um, it's designed for the purpose that you want it to have. Um, and it's, it's going to be extremely relevant because it's, it's data um, in that exact time period. You're not using data from, you know, a month ago or data from another town. You're getting data in your town at that exact moment in time. So it's very relevant and accurate information. Um, what would be the disadvantages of, of um, getting primary information? Um, the main disadvantage of getting primary information all, all the time would be that it's very time consuming. Okay? Daniel actually has to sit down and phone those 100 families and, and ask them all about how many pets they own. So that's going to take a very long time. Um, I'm sure he could get some, some information faster if he just did a quick online search for um, data about pet owners in uh, in towns close to him, he might be able to get some information. But once again, you won't know um, what time period that information is coming from and if it, if it directly correlates to the information in his town at that time period. Okay, so primary information is usually better, but it takes a long time to get that information. Number nine, let's say I check the websites of five different sports stores for the price of um, the Reebok 20K hockey stick. So let's say I'm interested in the price of the hockey stick. Um, Let's say then I actually go on, I actually look on the websites, I look at the different stores, so like I go to Hockey Life, I check, see, okay, it's 300 bucks here, I then go to Sport Check, I gather this data, I see, okay, it's, uh, it's 300 bucks here, and then keep searching five stores, I'm collecting all this data on my own, and I'm, uh, I'm able to determine um, how much this hockey stick is just by doing the research myself, collecting my own data for the exact purpose. Um, so let's say I want to get this hockey stick. So this is for, for my, my purpose here. So this data is definitely primary data. Okay, it's original data that I'm researching and I'm finding for um, a survey of seeing how much this hockey stick actually, um, actually costs. Okay. Um, this, the advantages of this method, um, this method was actually probably faster um, and cheaper than phoning um, all of the stores which would have been another way of uh, collecting primary data about this. So using the internet is actually usually a pretty fast way of collecting primary data. Um, disadvantages to this method? Um, I, I can't think of too many disadvantages of this method other than um, websites of stores aren't, aren't updated like to the minute all the time. So um, even though you see the price, it, it may go on sale or it, um, it may not be in stock at a certain store or something like that. But once again, this will be some primary data here. Because it's data that I've researched and collected um, for myself. And okay, that's it for that. Um, it's a short lesson for this. 
just make sure you know how to make a hypothesis and that you know the difference between primary and secondary um, sources of data. So just quickly again, primary data is original data that a researcher gathers specifically for a particular experiment or survey. Secondary data is data that someone else has already gathered for some other purposes. So, you know, someone else has already done a survey about something else um, and you just kind of use the information they've collected um, for your benefit. Okay, so make sure if you have any questions, you let me know. And make sure you try the worksheet. Go to the jensenmath.ca and, um, and download that worksheet. And you can download this lesson as well. Okay, thanks.